All right, we are back again with Anthony Colangelo again for Main Engine Cutoff. Thank you for coming so many times in a row here. Uh, and and T.S. Kelso from Celestrack, thank you for coming. And today we're going to go and do uh, another quick demo. We did one of these before. Uh, it actually wasn't a different day. It was, it was today. But we're going to do another quick demo of some very specific, very cool, unique things that Celestrack can offer for the Starlink capabilities that it has. So, so you've probably already seen the, the main demo on, on the full catalog. And what I want to show you today is a little bit about what we have for focus dialog. So if you go into the current data section on the site and you're interested in Starlink, there's actually two ways you can get to it. So if you're looking for the data that comes out of uh, Space Track, you know, from the 18th Space Control Squadron, you'll see it down here. And if you click on Starlink, you get the, uh, you get the list of TLEs, which a lot of people don't know what to do with. We also have a table that gives you basic information about the different satellites. You can sort on Apogee, Perigee, uh, the age of the TLEs, that kind of thing. So this is a huge project that SpaceX has been working on for years now at this point, and it's uh, really one of their main focuses at this point. They've been raising a lot of money for this, and it's uh, aimed to be a, a satellite internet constellation. They're going to be putting up a couple of thousand satellites that will provide internet access anywhere on the globe. So, uh, And it's different because they're much lower satellites than something like a geostationary satellite. So it will be latency equivalent to what we're used to down here on the ground with ground-based you know, cable or fiber optics or things like that. So please take my money. I'll sign up tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's a huge <laughs> thing, and it's it's what they're hoping will make them a lot of money in the future. And, and visually, it's we, we talked about Iridium being no longer up there, but up there when the way that they launched them, TS. I don't know if you could talk about why you know they launched them all at the same time, so it sort of becomes this train, right? And it's very easy to spot them uh, because they're all so close together, right? So right, they're they're close together, and actually. Uh, for those of you that might have seen our re-entering rocket body, you know, we have a trail of debris, you know, shining as it comes down. It looks like that. I mean, my first uh, experience seeing it on the first launch, it almost looked like a comet. You could just see this kind of comet, even though it wasn't dark on the ground. Uh, there was a thin uh, cirrus cloud, and you could still see this train of literally dozens of satellites just flying along. Uh, and so a lot of people are pretty excited about seeing that, uh, SpaceX is telling us that they're going to do their next launch at the end of December. And so we're working with them to be able to help you be able to find those uh, when you go out. Yeah, this is going to become a new phenomenon is go spot the trains as they launch more and more of these satellites. So if you, if you go in, uh, just like we did on the main demo, if you go in to uh, any of these globes, and we're going to pick the Starlink one, if you click on that link, what it's going to do is load the same animation that we had before, the interactive animation, but now we only have the Starlink data. And you can immediately see over here on the left, this is that, that train. So they launched November 11th. We're at this point, we're almost a month after that, and they're still fairly close together. And they're much closer than this right after the launch. I mean, they're basically, uh, I won't say they're touching, but <laughs> they're very close. And so you can, you can see where they are in orbit as it happens, they happen to be going right over uh, where I live. And here's the, the group from the first launch where they're more spaced out. And so you can do the same thing, you can do the animation, you can see what's going on. And so if you're located at a particular point in the globe and you want to see where they're going over, the easiest way to do that is go in the viewer options and switch to fix so that now the satellites are going to be you know, rotating around the Earth. We're going to be fixed on Earth. So we happen to be in, in the uh, Philly area right now. And you can see the different groups as they come over when they might be coming over. And the other part that you probably want to see is whether uh, it's nighttime or not where you're located. Like in this case, uh, if this was the real time, we wouldn't be able to see them because they're all in Earth eclipse. And so that's, that's the first place you would go to get the data the second place, if we go back to the main page, is something called supplemental TLE data. And so one of the issues that we have with these large deployments is that they're difficult to track. They're close together, trying to, you can get the radar observations, but as uh, Starlink is doing their low thrust maneuvering to move to higher orbits, it makes it difficult to keep the uh, observational TLEs lined up with uh, what's really going on. And so we've worked with SpaceX, and we actually get their ephemeris, so they know when they're going to maneuver, 
when they have maneuvered, and we generate TLEs based on SGP-4 to put that out on the site. And so if you click on this link, we're looking at the orbits based on the actual SpaceX data, and it's accurate to probably on the order of a couple hundred meters, or at least it agrees to a couple hundred meters with, with what their location is. And one of the things we're looking at doing for the next launch, which is supposed to go to the end of December, is to actually get that data before the launch and be able to generate TLEs so that people can plan for being able to go out and look at that. Very, very cool. And did you want me to show real quick how you could figure out when you could see that in SDK? Sure. Okay. All right, I'm going to drive for a second. I'm going to be playing the role of T.S. Kelso. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Starting from the current data page, you go to the supplemental data set right here, and you go to the uh, Starlink TLEs. I'm going to save this link as starlink.tce. Why TCE? That's just how SDK works. All right, so here we are in SDK. I'm just going to do this really quick. If you want, if you have any questions, go to support.agi.com and ask them. I'm going to insert a place object. I'm going to search by address. Insert this in here. We are at 220 Valley. So I just inserted my place. Obviously, it came up red. Uh, because that's the hardest color for everybody to see, so I'm going to change that real quick. <laughs> Special algorithm built just for that. Now again, if you want to get SDK, you just go to agi.com and go over to the resources section, and you can uh, get a download for free SDK. What I'm going to do is a quick deck access, which is a tool. There's a whole other video on how to use it. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but I'm going to go from my location here in Exton uh, and go out for five hours. I'm going to use uh, that file that I just pulled down from Celestrack that has all of the Starlink satellites in it. So this is the future ones that we have up there. Or we, we will have up there soon. And I'm going to advance. This is a quick little shortcut how to get all these things loaded into SDK so you don't have to load them all individually. Is any satellite that I have access to over the next five hours, I check this little box here. It's going to come up in my scenario. And I'm going to head, go ahead and compute this. You see some things jumping into this window over here. So here are all the times in the next five hours of when we can see Starlink satellites. And I can right click on the time here. And I, oops, sorry, that's not the time. <laughs> I could set my animation start time. You can see here's the beginning of the window of when that satellite is overhead our facility. And here's our facility. There's TS's rental car right there. And if I zoom out a little bit with my right mouse button, you can see that's the time of when that first uh, Starlink satellite is, is going overhead. And you can run more reports about which way to go. And it, the time that it shows down here is going to be in UTC. So uh, you'll want to change your report units to be uh, local time, and it'll just use the local time of whatever your machine is. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Change units, date unit. So you just come in here, change this to Gregorian LCL, which is Gregorian local. Apply that. You'll see the times update. And so this is your local time based on whatever your computer is, and you know when to go out and look for these things in the sky. And it looks like you've got a, dr a ground track here as well, right? So I can see which direction, right? I'm not a pro. I'm not doing this every day. So for me, it's helpful to so see. I have to look north a little bit west actually, uh, to get that view. Yes, I can actually do a, a, another quick thing to help you with that. Bear with me. I could make a um, constellation object, and we can do a quick chain report. I'm going to make a quick grouping of all the star links, and I can run a different report that gives you the actual azimuth elevation that you would point to, to see it. In my chain, I just choose uh, Constellation and Exton, and I can report on this chain here. And I want to do Access AER stands for azimuth, elevation, and range. The range doesn't matter as much in this. The azimuth and the elevation. So here, the azimuth, zero is north. Elevation is above the horizon of where you would specifically exactly have to look. So if I jump to this time, you'll see that the it's about 20, 28 degrees up. Jump back to our animation window, and you'll see that's, that's the direction you would look to, to go see it. Actually, we can put our view on the satellite looking down as well. Then that's what the satellite would see if it was looking at you. So that's real quick how you do run it in SDK. Uh, thanks again for being here today, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm going to be doing this pretty soon when that next launch goes up. All right. Did you learn everything? Or I think so. I'm really right. going to have to watch this a couple of times. So, All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. Cool. And there's, there's plenty of other tutorial videos uh, on our YouTube channel if you want to check them out and learn some of the other little quick tricks like that. Thanks, guys. Thank you.